So in the previous video, we needed a workspace ID to make the application request work if you had multiple workspaces in Asana. And those types of identifiers are common as requirements to making different types of API requests, but they're not always, always obvious you know, where to find them. So for example, I have a couple of workspaces here, one for my front company and one uh, for some game site onboarding for one of the tools that we use uh, that was created for me. So, uh, but I don't see anywhere in the UI where they're showing me what my workspace ID is. And when I click between the two uh, workspaces, I, you know, you want to look at the URL a lot of times to see if there's a unique ID there, but uh, I actually don't see the workspace ID in the URL. It's not clear to me that, that uh, those numbers are actually the workspace ID. So really at this point, what I would do is I would just go search uh, online and I search for how to find Asana workspace ID and it looks like the Asana developer forum has a question about this. And if you read through here, you start to understand that uh, the workspace ID that comes back in the, in the API is, is not the workspace ID that you can find in the UI. So you actually have to use the API to find the workspace ID. But uh, Daniel here has a, a nice tip that this particular link, which you don't need to use the API for, gives you your workspace IDs, assuming you're signed into Asana. So if you click here, you then see some data returned back from Asana that gives you your two, uh, you can see my front workspace and my gain side workspace, and then here are the IDs. So that was a nice little uh, useful tool and link that Asana provides for finding your workspace IDs. Uh, but if you didn't have that option where you don't get lucky like that, you would have to go and kind of work backwards through the API to find uh, your workspace ID. So if we go to the API docs and go to the API reference. We might look through here and uh, see that there's a workspaces endpoint. So uh, what we want to look at this is say, let's get multiple workspaces. And it looks like maybe if you were to uh, configure this endpoint, you might get some information back about the workspaces that belong to a particular user. Another avenue might be to go to the user's resource and get yourself as a user. So they give you this option, which a lot of APIs do, to identify uh, the, the user who is, who is making the API call. So that's associated with your API credentials. Uh, you can type in me as the path parameter uh, for that. And then if you look over here at the, at the response that you would get, if you had configured that, you would get some data back about who you are, your name and email, but you'd also get the list of all your workspaces. And then that would be another way to identify the ID for that workspace. So those are just some examples of how you can um, use the API docs and, and test out your API calls to find these uh, unique identifiers if you don't have them handy or they're not easy to find in the UI. Uh, another thing I'll say is you, you'll probably want to set up tools like Postman. Uh, so you can go to postman.com and get a tool to help you test APIs because uh, if you're trying to test all these requests, uh, you need a tool to help you do that uh, and, and see what the responses are like.